Welcome back to DevOps Clinic. My name is Matt and I've been a Linux system admin, network engineer and DevOps engineer for over 25 years. And I'm also a SaltStack certified engineer. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at the package execution module. We're gonna use this to help patch our servers. To see all the available options for the package execution module, head over to the saltproject.io website, go to documentation and on the right, scroll down to salt module reference, then click on execution modules. Over here on the left, you'll see where it's the package module. One thing to note, there are some minor differences in the options between operating systems. Today we're gonna to use Rocky Linux 9, but most operating systems will be fairly familiar. All right, let's get started. One of the first things you might wanna do when you're patching your systems is to get a list of what patches are needed. For that, we're gonna use the package.list underscore upgrades command. So let's run that now. All right, now that this is run, let's go ahead and scroll to the top. And right here we can see the first system that came back is the database server. And you can see all the available patches and their versions that will be applied. If we keep scrolling down, you can see the web server. And then finally, if we scroll all the way to the bottom, we can see the salt server has no available patches. So this is a nice way just to get a list to see what is gonna be patched. So now that we have this list, let's go ahead and do an update to something. So let's look here. I can see we have the sudo package needs to be updated. So let's go ahead and update sudo. And we're gonna do it across all servers. We're gonna say package.upgrade. And if we say name equals and then the name of the package, it's only gonna upgrade that package. So let's go ahead and run that. All right, now that that's finished, let's take a look. So here you can see the salt server didn't apply any updates to the pseudo package because none was available. But you can see on the web and database server, both had updates available. And you can see the old and new versions. Okay, so what about if we want to upgrade multiple packages at a time? So if we go ahead and use the package upgrade command, and we're gonna do this against all servers again. And if you specify a parameter called pkgs or packages and put this in single quotes and if you do double bracket square brackets and then you can list out all the packages that you want to update all right so we've got five packages listed here let's go ahead and let that run All right, so if we scroll up here, so we can see that on database and the salt server, no packages were applied because none were needed, but on the web server, there was patching available for the systemd packages. Another common way that we like to upgrade is to specify a specific version that we want a package to be on. So let's go ahead and upgrade the um, TZ data and the curl packages. So let's uh, do package upgrade. And we're gonna still specify packages equals quotes and brackets and TZ data. We're just gonna let it pull whatever the latest version is. But for curl, let's specify a specific version. So if you add curly braces, then you say curl in quotes, colon, and then in double quotes again, let's put the version number. All right, so what this should do, it should upgrade TZ data to the latest curl to that specific version. And it finished here. So you can see salt and web, of course it didn't have any updates available for curl or TZ data, but for database it did. And you can see the old and new versions for curl, libcurl and TZ data. Now you can see it also updated libcurl because it's a dependency of curl. So for our last example, I'm gonna show you how to upgrade all packages on all servers or all packages on one server. But before we get to that, I'm gonna show you a neat little hack that I've come up with. 
So if we go ahead and let's run a package list upgrades, but instead of just outputting it the normal way, we're gonna say output as YAML. And obviously you can use this in any scripts or programs, write it out to a file and parse it. So you can see it's standard YAML format. But one of the things that I wanna do is let's modify this just a little bit. So let's go ahead and use some Linux tools to format this the way we want. So if we run this command, basically what this is gonna do is, because when we were looking at that YAML format, the server names are not indented, but the package names are, this is gonna get rid of all the server names and that's gonna sort all the packages and then have a unique one for each. So we will see multiple packages if there are different versions, but this will at least just show um, only the package names, not the server names. And you can see here, it's just the package names. Now, again, it doesn't show us which servers need them. It just shows across our network, these are packages that need updates. But let's take this even one step further. So let's go ahead and after we get rid of the server names, let's get rid of everything after the colon, which is the version number. Then we'll sort it, make it unique. So even if there are multiple versions out there, we're only gonna see the package names that need to be updated. And this is something that I use every month when I do my patching, that when I send out notifications to my teams, basically here are the list of updates that are coming. I also give them a list of the servers that these may or may not apply to. At least that gives them a heads up. So the final thing I'm gonna show you is just a across the board upgrade. And I do this a lot of times, especially with my own personal servers, I don't want to go and just do one or two servers at a time or one or two packages at a time. I would just want to do an upgrade for everything. So let's go ahead and if we do all servers and say package.upgrade with no other options, this may take a couple minutes. A few moments later. Okay, so you can see here it finished. And if we scroll up, you can see there's going to be a lot of packages that were upgraded. It shows you all new versions. And if we get right up here, we can see all the packages we just scrolled through was just for DB1. And if we scroll up further, we'll see these are the ones for Web01. And the salt server had no updates available. So, one last freebie I'll show you. Whenever you patch, a lot of times you're replacing the kernel and for the kernel to take effect, you have to reboot the system. So let's go ahead and I'm not going to uh, reboot the salt server. So I'm gonna specify web server. And if we say system.reboot, this will reboot our web server. And we can do the same thing with our database server. This was just a small fraction of what you can do with the package execution module. I encourage you to scroll through the docs on the SALT project website, see what you can do with this module. If you've used SALT to patch your servers, have you used this module or do you do something different? Also, what are some ways that we could use this differently? Um, please leave your comments, questions below. Be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you can be notified when the next video is available. If this video was helpful, please like and share. This helps us, shows us you find our content valuable. And until next time, automate everything.